What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mana Kids Online Family Experience. God has something great in store for you, your family, and we're thankful that you get to experience it together. So keep watching and learning. pajamas? Look at all these fun animals! My pajamas are for our Clubhouse Christmas pajama party! And I'm in charge of getting all the supplies! Now, what do we need for a Christmas pajama party? Yes! Lots of Christmas pajamas! And party horns! And we'll want some music so we can sing and dance. This is going to be such a great party! Hoo, hoo. It's Ollie! Hello, Poppy! Hoo, hoo. 
I can see that you're making a list. Is there a party that I have missed? Not yet, Ollie. We're getting ready for a Christmas pajama party. I'm in charge of getting all the party supplies. Christmas is a special day. It's true. And I have a story about why just for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. La 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 la. <laughs> Hi friends. It's almost Christmas. Are you getting excited? Me too. And look at this. I have so many Christmas cards to deliver today, but none of these are more important than this. It's our story mail. Are you ready for the true story of Christmas? Great, here we go. Okay, so the true story of Christmas began when an angel told Mary she was going to have a special baby named Jesus. And that baby was going to be super special because, drum roll please, Jesus was God's son. That's right. God loves us so much that he gave us his son, Jesus. Today's story is about when Jesus was born. Look, it's Mary and Joseph. What is Mary riding on? Do you know what that animal is? A donkey, you're right. What does a donkey say? Hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. <laughs> Great job. Mary and Joseph needed an animal like a donkey to get to the town of Bethlehem. When they got to Bethlehem, they needed to find a place to stay. So Joseph knocked on a door to see if they had a room. Everybody knock with me. Ready? Knock, knock, knock. The man said there was no room for them, but they could stay in the stable out back. So Mary and Joseph went to sleep in a stable where all the animals stayed. Listen, what animals do you hear? A horse, that's right. What's this one? A chicken, that's right. What's this one? A sheep, that's right. What about this one? It's a baby. Jesus was born. Everyone say, happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. Mary wrapped baby Jesus up and put him in a manger. Wow, the most special baby in all the world had been born. Jesus is special because Jesus is God's son. That is why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus was born and Jesus is God's son. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, why is Jesus special? Jesus is God's son. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me. Why is Jesus special? Jesus is God's son. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus is special. He was born for me and you. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, Jesus was born near animals like cows and sheep. Jesus is special because Jesus is God's son. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I know one more thing we need to add to the list. A birthday cake because Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Oh, and a candle. See you guys next time. Bye!
God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, John 3, 16. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, John 3, 16. Lab. This month, we're celebrating Christmas. Well, we take a look at the story of two surprise visits. Oh, and we're also going to be doing this. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. <laughs> we're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You know what there is a lot of at Christmas? What? Surprises. I love surprises. Great. <laughs> So you're going to surprise me? Okay. Have you ever watched A Christmas Carol? Yes. Well, there's the Scrooge. Every fool who goes around with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a steak of holly. There is 
heart. And he's visited by three spirits that help him understand the true meaning of Christmas. So you are going to get three surprise visits. By what or who? Just be patient. Now, you know what happens in your body when you get startled? Here, look at my hand. Is it shaking? Nope. So why? <laughs> now you're shaking. But, yeah, I wasn't expecting a six foot polar bear thing. Exactly. You got startled. When you are startled, a part of your brain called the hypothalamus is triggered. The hypothalamus sends signals to the adrenal gland and your whole system floods with adrenaline, causing your heart to pump blood more forcefully to your muscles. My heart is definitely pounding. But you don't actually need to run for your life. Yeah, he's, he's kind of cute. He's cuter over here. Right, so your parasympathetic nervous system has kicked in and stopped the adrenaline and lower your heart rate back to normal. Just in time for another visitor? I am not going to tell you. Okay, we can't do this all day. There is nothing that you can do that's gonna... Oh. Whoa! That is strong! What <laughs> is that? Your next surprise visitor. Yes, but what is it? Limburger cheese, one of the stinkiest foods in the world. It smells like feet. It's fermented with the same bacteria that makes your feet smell. Blech. I'm ready for an unsurprised visitor. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. But over and over, God's people would run to God and then pull away, just like a yo-yo. Then, foreign nations invaded and captured the Israelites. They must have wondered if God still loved them and had a plan for them. While they were captive, God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. But then, for hundreds of years, Silence. Not a single recorded word from God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone! So, we have made the leap from the stories of the Jewish people we find in the Old Testament in our Bibles to the stories of Jesus and the church we find in the New Testament. And we're about to see how God's amazing rescue plan plays out. It's been a long wait, like hundreds of years. God's people are now ruled by the Romans. They're not free. And there's still a lot of work God has to do in their hearts. There was a priest named Zechariah. He and his wife, Elizabeth, faithfully served God, but they had no children. Zechariah and Elizabeth had prayed over and over and over to have a baby but they believed they were past the age it could ever happen. Then, one day, Zechariah was chosen to enter the temple and burn incense before God while his group of priests was serving. This was an amazing opportunity for Zechariah. As Zechariah stood before the altar, a glorious angel from God appeared before him. Zechariah was totally blown away, but the angel told him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. You must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit before he's even born and bring back many people to God. He will prepare the way for the Lord. Whoa! Zachariah's mind must have been reeling. I mean, God was promising a child and not just any kid but one who would be a powerful leader for God. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is old too. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent until after John is born, because you did not believe my words. Ouch! Zachariah didn't have anything to say to this, because he couldn't. 
God had taken away his ability to speak. When he left the temple, the other priests tried to find out why Zachariah had been in there so long, but he could only tell them in gestures, like charades. It must have been a double shock for Elizabeth when Zachariah got home. Not only was he unable to speak, but he had a pretty unbelievable story to share. She must have been overjoyed though, when God's words came true and she became pregnant. The Lord, the Lord has been kind to me. He has taken away my shame among the people. Now, Elizabeth and Zechariah's story wasn't over, but we need to take a quick detour because several days journey away in the town of Nazareth, Elizabeth's cousin Mary was about to receive some amazing news too. Mary was just an ordinary girl living in an ordinary small town, but even though her life seemed perfectly ordinary, her heart was not. Mary loved and worshiped God with everything she had. And one morning, a glorious messenger from God appeared to Mary. Greetings, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. Mary was completely shocked. Obviously. I, I don't understand what you're telling me. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king and he will rule forever over his people. How can this happen? The Holy Spirit will make it happen. In fact, your relative Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she is old and people thought she could not have children. That's because what God says will always come true. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me? just as you said it would. Mary must have had so many questions, but she chose to trust God. She wanted to see for herself how God was working. So she took a trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. It would have taken days of hard travel, but at last she arrived in the hill country of Judea where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. Elizabeth, it's so good to see you. God has blessed you more than any other women, and blessed is the child you will have. But why is God so kind to me? Why has the mother of my Lord come to me? Well, how, how did you know? As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary stayed with Elizabeth several months. During that time, the joy in her heart overflowed. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my savior. He's taken note of me even though I'm not considered important. And after three months, Mary went home. Soon after that, it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby. All of Zachariah and Elizabeth's relatives turned up to celebrate. Oh, hi there, little Zachariah. No, he must be called John. Oh, but no one else in the family has that name. Everyone turned to Zachariah to get his say, but of course, he still couldn't talk. So he gestured for something to write with. Zachariah wrote, his name is John. And immediately, he could speak. <clears throat> John, his, his name is John, praise God! Everyone was filled with amazement and the news spread throughout the whole region as they asked, what is this child going to be? The end, or at least to be continued. Can you imagine if an angel showed up right here? That would trigger some adrenaline for sure. <laughs> or imagine being Mary or Elizabeth. Mary thought it was impossible for her to have a baby, and Elizabeth thought it was impossible for her because of her age. But anything is possible with God. So what's our part in the story? Well, we all have things in our lives that seem pretty impossible. Maybe your mom and dad really want to do a family hike up a tall mountain, and you feel like there's no way you can make it. Or maybe your best friend moved away, and you won't get to see her until next summer and it feels totally impossible to wait. Or maybe you have a ginormous book report or a really hard test. You know, when something feels overwhelming and impossible, stop, take a deep breath, 
Remember how God has done the impossible. Like giving a baby to Zachariah and Elizabeth. Or parting the Red Sea so the Israelites could walk right through it. Or creating the entire universe. Exactly. You can even think of times when God has done something that seemed impossible for someone in your family, or even you. Ask God to give you courage and strength to keep going, knowing anything is possible with God. I feel like I could climb a ginormous mountain right now. Hey, go for it! I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. Erica. So here's the thing. Anything is possible with God. Yep, even this. <gasps> oh, who's this little guy? Your third surprise visitor. Now this is the kind of surprise I like. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> On your poppers. Whoa! What is this? Uh, I was hoping you could tell me. Uh, no. Well, I was waiting for you before I opened it. Why? Just in case. Uh, in case? Just in case there's a bear inside. You think there's a bear inside? Well, I don't not think there's a bear inside, so... Well, only one way to find out. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. A one-horse open sleigh. Hey! I was kind of hoping for a bear. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So and So Show. And today. Hey, a spider! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. No, sorry, it's just a ball of hair. All right. What happened? You lost your voice? Uh, go, go get some chalk. Don't worry, everyone. We're always prepared when something like this happens, right, John? Yes, you are right. Okay, yeah, you probably could have just nodded for that one. What? Yes. Yes, you are right. Okay, maybe just nod at me for the easy ones. Okay, all right, so what are we gonna do now? John's lost his voice and I have to continue to do the show without him. Uh, maybe play a game? Uh, one that's uh, like thematic, but also it fits with your specific malady? Uh, like, um, what can we do, what can we do? Oh, oh, oh you got an idea. What, what, okay, you gonna write it down? Okay, great, great. Boy, this is gonna be good. What have you got? Looks like we're playing Christmas Carol Charades. Christmas Carol Charades. So here's how it's gonna work. John will pick the name of a Christmas Carol from this hat. Uh, then he'll have to use everything except his voice to try and get me to guess it. You guys can play at home. You ready, John? All right, here we go. All right, here it is. First one, okay, three words. First word is a, a small word, uh, and no, it's a little word, it's little, big, little, little, little's the word. Okay, little. Second word, little, 
little drum drummer, drum a little drummer boy. Yeah. Well, that happened. Okay. Here we go. All right. Also three words. First word, sounds like. Uh, neck, neck, uh, sounds like neck. Uh, 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 wreck, uh, spec, uh, uh, deck, uh, deck, deck. Three, deck the halls. Yes. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. How many? One, two, the six. Six words. First word is flapping bird singing angel. Angel. Yes, angel. Angel. Fourth word. Ear or sounds like? Okay. <laughs> sounds like ear. Uh, oh, you hearing? You hearing? Angels here? Angels something something here? Angels uh, we have heard on high. Oh. John, you did a great job. I, you know, I'm glad that we figured out a way around your voice problem for the beginning of the show, but we still have a whole half of the show left to do. What? You got some, an idea? What is it? Oh, six words? Okay, here we go. First first word is a small word. Uh, uh, and, uh, are, uh, it, it's, it, it. Uh, it's. Bible Bible story time, Bible story time, Bible story time. Oh, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, fellas, how are things? Uh, we're mostly fine, but uh, John has lost his voice. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what are we talking about today, Kellen? Well, we're talking about a pair of very important cousins, Elizabeth and Mary. Let's start with Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, well, he was a priest, and they both faithfully followed God. They wanted children, but they didn't have any. And then one day... What is this? Hello, Kellen. This is Diane DeWitt with Ancient News, where we only cover the oldest possible news. Later, swatch watches, fading fad or forever fashion. But first, an angel sighting in Judea. We go now live to the scene. Elizabeth and Zachariah, describe for our viewers exactly what you saw. Oh, I didn't see it myself. Zechariah did, but he can't talk. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. Today, Zechariah was chosen to burn incense to God in the temple, and when he went in there, an angel appeared to him. Shocking news. What did the angel say? He said, my name is Gabriel. And he said, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will have a child. You must name him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and he will bring back many people to God. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. Now, why can't he talk? Is he shy? No. He didn't believe the angel when he said that God would give us a child at our age. And so God said that he would not be able to speak until our son is born. Remarkable story. Back to you, Kellen. In spite of how weird all of that was, that's exactly what went down. 
The angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and told him that he would be blessed with a son, and that son would grow up to be again. Diane Duet here again with Ancient News. Later, a foolproof solution to your unwound cassettes. But first, another angel sighting. This time in Nazareth, we go live to the scene. Mary, tell us about your angel sighting. Well, he said that the Lord was blessing me in a very special way, which was wonderful, but so surprising. I I'm no one special. I just love the Lord with all my heart. Incredible. Was there more? Oh, yes. He said that I would get pregnant soon with a son. Was this angel by any chance named Gabriel? Yes. How did you know? I'm an exceptional reporter. Please continue. Oh. Well, he told me I must call my baby Jesus and that he would be the Son of God, that the Holy Spirit would make this happen. And did he offer any evidence for his claim? Well, he told me my cousin Elizabeth is going to have a baby, even though she's old. Actually, I think we've got Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you there? Mary, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're pregnant? This is incredible. Oh, just talking to you, I felt the baby jump inside me. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. Uh, this is amazing. I, I have to go tell Joseph. Back to you, Kellen. So, you might have guessed already, but that was Mary, Jesus' mom. Both she and her relatives were visited by the angel Gabriel, and they both ended up having very important children. I kind of thought that was going to happen. Hello, Kellen. It's Diane DeWitt here with Ancient News. Perhaps you remember the story of Elizabeth, who everyone thought was too old to have a child. Of course I remember. You just told us about it. I just go where the news is, Kellen. And the news today is that Elizabeth and Zachariah's baby has been born. <laughs> His name is John. His name is John. <laughs> it's wonderful. As you can see, Zechariah can speak again. <laughs> I can't talk again. I can't talk again. I can't talk. His name is John. <laughs> People wanted us to name our son Zechariah as well, but we did what the angel said. John is a good name. A happy conclusion to an amazing story. It was wonderful to see you again, Mr. and Mrs. The Baptist. Zechariah and Elizabeth the Baptist. The Baptist is our last name, John yeah. Baptist. We, we got it. Up next, Chicken Crosses Road. Why? Find out after the break. Kellen? So, obviously, their last name wasn't The Baptist, but they were John the Baptist's parents. John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus, was born to parents that no one would have ever expected, just like how Jesus was born to Mary, miraculously. With God, anything is possible, and that's still true today. When God is involved, miracles can happen. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Kellen. It's pretty amazing, right, John? Oh, how's your voice doing? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear that works. Cool. That's a, that's a lot of honey. Okay. <laughs> Reveal the question! Today's question is, what's the most amazing thing you've ever seen? Oh. A serious answer or a joke answer? Mm, serious. All right. The solar eclipse a few years back was amazing. No, joke. Okay. The container store. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. There really is something to put everything in at the container store. <laughs> it's, it's pretty. Am what about you? <sighs> oh. <clears throat> I went to the Grand Canyon when I was a kid and was absolutely blown away by it. I mean, I know it's just a big hole in the ground, but still, it's very grand. I'm glad your voice is back. You know, I miss our back and forth. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this was the So-and-So Show.
<laughs> How did God show us his love? That's right, he sent Jesus. Jesus came to be born, live a perfect life, and then sacrifice that life on a cross so we could be forgiven of our sins. And what is sin? Correct! Sin is anything we think, say, or do that makes God sad, and it separates us from him. God didn't want to stay separated from us though. That's why Jesus died on the cross. If you have never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you're gonna have the opportunity right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I put my faith in you. I put my trust in you. And I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we know there's a party going on in heaven. And now it's time for small groups. In the links below, we have some amazing resources, including Manikid's Facebook group and Instagram that will allow you and your family to learn more about God together all week long. Okay, I'll see you next week.